Hello everyone and welcome to the video lecture series of mobile application development. Students, in the previous session we have talked about the grid view, how we can implement the grid view and the list view as well. So now in this session we are going to talk about the grid layout. Hi, this is our instructor Janice Shah. So let's begin to understand that what do we mean by the grid layout. There is a little bit difference between the grid view and the grid layout. Students, when we talk about the grid view, it simply gives us the two dimensional view to display our items or we can say the view items. Now, on the other hand, the grid layout is itself a view group or we can say it's a layout manager that arranges the views in the form of grids. The layout that places its children in the rectangular grid is known as grid layout. The grid layout is also the type of the Android layout that create the Android applications who display the widgets and the text field in the grid format. Grid layout is usable to show the data in the form of the row and the column like the application developer want to show the data that how much columns are there and the rows are there in the layout file. It is also creating the matrix layout inside the Android application. The grid layout where the grid is composed a set of the infinite thin lines. That means that each and every grid is separated by the thin lines. Okay. And that particular box is known as cells. Students, in the grid layout, the particular grid number 1 has the indices 0. So same as the array, here inside the grid layout, the item starts with the indices 0. Now, throughout the API, students, we can say the application programming interface, the grid lines are referenced by the grid indices. Always remember, the grid with n column has n plus 1 grid lines. That means, if we can say, or like, uh, if, it's, if we can say, that the, we have the grid number of columns are 3 then it must contains the 4 indices that starts from the 0 to n. Now the grid layout is configured and starts with the grid item with index number 0. Here the two things you need to understand the number 1 is the row and the column specifications. Students the children that means the grid item okay. So children occupy one or more configuration cells has defined by the row specification and the column specification of the layout. Each specification defines the set of rows and the columns that are need to be occupied by the particular grid layout. See the default cell assignment that means if a child does not specify any row or column indices of the particular cell then it wish to occupy the particular grid position at the time the cell location is automatically arranged by the grid location. See what what the benefit of the grid layout here you need you can specify the particular grid item should be there in the particular which column and which row. Okay, so you can also assign the row and the column to particular grid item that grid item is situated at that particular position only. If I can say this is my grid layout the first 0 0 position 0 1 position 0 2 position 1 0 position 1 2 pos 1 1 position 1 2 position if i said my particular grid item is situated as 0 0 then it should be here if i say it is situated as 1 1 then it should be here so such like the students the, you can specify your column and row as well next when we talk about the grid attributes so here the number one grid attribute is align mode Two different types of modes are there in which you can align your data. The number one is align bound and number two is align margin. So when we talk about the align bound, it should be zero by default because it aligned to take the places between the number of edges of the views. And when we set the align margin, when it's set to align margin students, it caused the alignment takes place between the outer boundary of the views as defined by its margin. Fine. Number two is a column count and how many maximum number of column counts you want there inside the grid layout. Next is a column order preserved when. So when it's true then forces column boundaries to appear in the same order as column indices. 
okay by default it is true when we talk about the orientation so here you can set the orientation same as the linear layout so the orientation is property is not used during the layout but this is used to allocate the row and the column parameters when they are not specified by the children's layout parameters it works as a linear layout put all the components either in a single row or single column flag weights are there when we need to set to the horizontal the value should be zero for the vertical layout it should be one grid layout attributes next is a attribute is a row count that maximum number of row you need to create or we can say the automatically positioning the child layout next the order preserves the same as the column one the use default margin when you set to the true the grid layout is used to set the default margin when none or specified view layout parameters are there by default the value is false now how can we create the grid layout see here we have the activity underscore main dot xml file where the constraint layout is there inside that i have taken one grid layout grid layout the properties should be um, you need to specify the very good properties like no row count is 5 and the column count is 2 that means 5 plus 2 total 10 items i'm going to show over here fine id is already given like grid layout ex the margin is 10 sp to each now what i did i just specified one button see now one button is my one view component and i need can specify row count or i can say like a uh, row specification column specification over here as well so the column weight and row weight is one i give the gravity is a fill and then specify the button one two three four five and six so here i have already given the column weight and the row weight to a particular button as well fine so this is how students you can specify the buttons inside your grid layout now this is my output that how it can show to you now if you want to run this particular code let me let me take to the practicals now so students this is the grid layout practical so when you talk about the grid layout practical let me just a uh, little bit make it in a bigger size okay so here students you can specify your call column specification okay call span call row span is also there you can specify the column like layout column should be one so it should be inside the one column okay we can say the layout column one and layout i can say layout underscore row row should be three so this button is in third row and the first number column if we want to see let me just change the text over here it should be button two okay so you can see the button two is here it should set inside the third row and the second number column okay so in the layout column one and column number three all the buttons now how you can do this let me just show you let me just remove the particular whole code of the grid items so we'll get the better idea for that so first of all what you need to do you just need to take one grid layout over here the layout width is match parent layout height is match parent here row count i have taken is five column count is 2 id is grid layout example margin is 10 sp now what i did see instead of the gravity fill how it looks like let me show you so here it is the without the gravity so it is how it, it is shown to you like it's a column weight is 1 and row weight is 1 when we set to the 0, zero see this is the difference when if we do not can give them the column weight and the row weight then this is the uh, layout position how it even looks like so what you have to do for you first when you make one button just start with the android id button one okay the text is button one as well now the layout width and the column width and the weight and the row weight is uh, set to the zero in the minus button is one when we set the layout weight to one okay and this is also the one it will occupy the whole position of the particular area 
and then you just need to copy the button okay and the paste it like this see it will automatically divide your screen into two different parts just change the id change the button now set the data again see right so you just need to copy and paste the data and with that the grid is automatically created you have specified the number of columns too that's why it's set in the two if we specify the number of columns three okay then it will set according to it okay columns three go count is Fine. So now set the button again. Let me show you that how it will looks like. So here it is. Type button number four. Okay. And let me just change it back to the number of column. So you can also change students data like this. So here it is how we can set the data. If you want to set the button number two, where the this is my zero zero position. Okay, so I can just the position which in every button. So if we can set it like this, the column zero go zero. Okay, now let me just copy and paste this to column. We can say. One and the row should be one. See, it's at a lower here, right? Now, if I want to change it like this, the column should be two and the row should be one. But column can be not two, so it should be column count is one and the row count is. So it will set like this. So as like students, you can also give the column count, column in the row, and you can set the data for that in the grid layout. Okay. Now what you need to do, you just need to copy and paste these buttons, and it will automatically set the layout. See. So this button one, two, three, four, five, six, everything is set. Up. So you can use the grid layout like this. In the further lecture, students will talk about grid layout. With we are going to implement the grid layout in the form of the card view, grid view, recycler view, and so many things. So do not worry about that. So if you have any doubt in this lecture, then please feel free to ask. Thank you so much.